Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are enjoying your day so far and hope you're ready to learn a little bit more about Swift development in today's video. Now, have you guys ever wondered how to actually reduce some of the code that you guys write inside of your programs and how to make it very, very easy to maintain for perhaps uh, the other teammates inside of your software development organization? Well, in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys out there some of my kind of tips and tricks and some techniques on how to reduce the amount of code that you write by using the reduce function to make your life a little bit simpler. So let's go ahead and get started with Playgrounds and I'll show you guys exactly uh, how to use this reduce function inside of your apps as well. All right, so I have Playgrounds open right now and why don't we get started with something that is super, super simple and we're going to implement the function that takes an array of integers and we're going to sum all of these integers into one single value. So I'm going to show you how to do this the long traditional way of using a for loop right now. So let's see what this function needs to be called. So function, I'm going to call it summation like that. And let me just say four numbers like so. And this is going to be an array of integers. And the final value that I want my function to return is some kind of integer that represents exactly what the sum is. All right, so pretty good stuff so far. And the thing that I want to do inside of this function is to somehow start with a, an initial value for my sum, and then I'll return that sum value at the very end. In other words, I want to say var sum equals zero, and just return this sum here, and do some logic in between like that. All right, so a pretty good start right there. And I want to actually make this summation call. I want to invoke this function with a simple set of numbers, for example, one, two, and three. And if you add these numbers in your head, you get the value of six at the very end, right? So on the right side, we have the sum uh, coming out to be zero. And obviously, that's not what the answer needs to be. So let's go ahead and implement the logic inside of this summation function with a for loop on numbers. So I'm going to use a for each loop on this number array like that with for each and just hit enter for the autocomplete to give you this syntax right here. And for the int, I'm just going to say num. And then for the code in here, I'm simply going to add onto the sum with each of these numbers that I am iterating over inside of this numbers array. So that's kind of what uh, my logic looks like. And at the very end here, we see the value of six and that ugly warning up there sort of goes away. So this is six for the sum of one, two, and three. If we add in a four, we will obviously get the value of 10. So really good stuff right there. And let me show you how to actually reduce some of this code so that you don't actually need to type out so much. So one thing that you can already reduce here is this for each loop. You don't really need to type out all of this. So in other words, you can remove all of the code inside of this brace, type in this, and just say sum plus equals dollar sign zero. So what exactly is dollar sign zero? Well, dollar sign zero is pretty much the value that we're iterating over uh, numbers with. So this is, uh, in the previous example, the dollar sign zero represents the num and um variable. So that's one way of doing it. Well, how about if we didn't actually want to write out this entire function and just use one simple uh, reduce call on this array? So what do I mean? Well, let's copy this entire array like so. And I'm going to say let you know my sum right here equals the array. And I'm going to call this function on it uh, called reduce. So some of you guys that don't know what reduce does, well, you kind of have to go through a simple example before you sort of understand exactly how the logic works. And reduce takes in two parameters. The first, uh, first parameter is the initial result. And this is going to be the value of zero, very similar to the logic here. You have to have some kind of initial value. And for the next partial result, this is the sort of confusing parameter. I'm just going to hit enter and we get these two things that we have to fill out and the result I'm going to hit res for my result for the int I'm going to use next 
And then you also have to modify this result to give you some kind of return type parameter. Okay, so we have this function here and we have this initial result of zero. And for the code, we have to just execute the logic that will help us add all of the numbers together. So I'm going to just type it out with a return and res plus next like that. So res is my result on every loop and then next is the next number inside of my loop. So it's very, very similar to how sum plus equals dollar sign zero. You can kind of think of next as dollar sign zero for each iteration of your loop. And then as you kind of loop through the entire array, you keep track of this result variable over each iteration. So let's see what my sum actually equals by using a print statement of, let's see, my sum. I think that works for me, should work for you as well. So my sum, if you look at it, gives you a value of 10 for the summation of one, two, three, and four. So how about we change that array to include perhaps a value of five and the value of five added onto 10 is 15. So this is the reduce function that you would use in place of you know writing out a specific function such as this summation call up here. So the other thing that you can do to even further reduce the number of code uh, lines of code that you have to type out is you can get rid of some of this ugliness by making it a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to comment that out and say let my sum equals perhaps one, two, and three reduce. And for the initial result, we will use a value of zero again. And then for the next partial result, you can just use brace brace and say dollar sign zero plus dollar sign one. Okay. Now I know this bit of syntax looks probably pretty confusing for some of you guys out there. And basically dollar sign zero and dollar sign one represents res and next respectively. And then the logic of adding it together is pretty much this logic right here where you add res and you add next to give you your, uh, your result that you have to keep track of for each iteration of your loop. So that's kind of how the summation function can be reduced. And you don't have to actually write out all of this code right here to do something that's relatively simple and straightforward, such as adding numbers and keeping track of these numbers as you go through your array. All right, so that's how that works for the summation. And the next task that we have down below right here is to implement the product of an array of integers. So very similar to adding numbers together, the product is just simply multiplying each number of your array so that you can eventually get the product value at the very end. I think that's what the product is defined as. So let's see, if we use the similar logic of you know, providing a function, we can type it out pretty quickly. So let me show you guys what the long form of this looks like. So let's see, product uh, function, I guess. And this will take in, same thing, a numbers array, so int. And it also needs to return an integer value type. So very similar to the summation, we can just say var perhaps product equals one instead of zero because the product is multiplying numbers together. So let's say we want to return this product at the very end. And then inside of this uh, bit of code here, let's execute numbers dot for each and start to multiply all these numbers together. So I'm just going to uh, perhaps type it out the long way first, so num like that, and product times equals num like so. And that's pretty much all the logic we need to define the product of all the numbers inside of a long list of uh, numbers in an array. So to prove that this function actually works, why don't we say product function for a list of numbers, one, two, and three. That should give me six for the multiplication of two, three, and one, so obviously six. If you type in four, you should get six times four, giving you the value of 24. So pretty good stuff there. And how do we want to 
reduce all of this code so that we can just use one reduce function call. Well, it is pretty simple if you follow the exact same example of this guy up here and just say let you know my product equals the array of one, two, and three. And you can perhaps call it reduce again. The initial result is one, and then the next partial result, use the two braces and just say dollar sign zero times dollar sign one. So again, this should give you the similar logic of multiplying the numbers together. Per, uh, if you think about it this way, it's the result times the next number. And remember, dollar sign zero is the result, and then the dollar sign one stands for the next number inside of your array that you're iterating over. So finally, I want to print out what my product is at the very end here and just use the my product variable inside of your print statement. And then down here, you get the product of six for all of this. So let's say four and five, that should give me something like 120. And just like how we would expect, this product function gives us 120 for the multiplication of all of the values inside of this array. It's really good stuff. And let's see, how am I doing on time here? Well, let's see if I want to show you something about how to reduce an array of strings into a sentence. So the last task that I have down here is to perhaps reduce an array of strings into a single string sentence. And I'll show you what the example is going to be. Let's say I have this array right here. So Brian uh, is Let's see, the, let's see, greatest of, uh, let's see, all time. So I am the, the goat, the greatest of all time. And let's say this is uh, an array of strings called facts. And Brian is the greatest of all time. And I want to reduce this entire array into a simple string. So how do I go about doing that without having to write out this entire for loop array like so, and you know, try to add strings onto each other. Well, we can make a simple reduce call just like this. So let's see, let true facts equals, see facts is my array of strings and let's use a reduce call like that. And then the initial result is just going to be an empty string. So it's gonna be this guy right here. And then the next partial result, I'm going to add each string onto the initial result. And I'm gonna do that by using the brace brace and let's just use the initial result. So this is the result value. And I'm going to add the next value which represents, or which is represented by the dollar sign one. So let me print out what this is first. So true facts. And then I'll explain to you how this actually works by going through the long form exercise. So hopefully this code compiles and hopefully it runs for me. And you see down here it says true facts and you see this entire sentence like so. Now if I wanted to introduce a space between each one of these words, you can just add in the string at the very end. And then every word that you append onto the result, you get this extra string on the right side of the word, which means that you get a space like this. And technically, I think you have a trailing space at the very end, but we'll just ignore that little small problem for now. Okay, so how does all of this code work? How does this reduce work onto this function? And for some of you that don't exactly see the logic yet, let me write out the long form of this by using the for loop. So let's just give this function call a name. So let's say function transform into sentence is my function for words. And this is going to be a string array. And for the end of the entire function, I need to return some kind of string for the uh, entire sentence that I need. So let's see, what do I need to do here? Let's say here is my initial result equals this empty string. Let's just return this initial result at the very end of the function. 
All right. So with all of this logic here, I need to somehow let's see somehow append words onto initial result. You know somehow so question mark, and I can call this function on perhaps the facts array from the top right here, or we can just use a different function or a different array. And let's see, a sly fox jumps like so. All right, so this transformation of this entire array needs to append all of these words into some kind of initial result. And that initial result is going to be an empty string. So words right here coming from the incoming parameter. Okay, so now I'm going to iterate through all of the words inside of my words array with a for each call like that. You can hit enter for the auto completion, and this is going to be the word for each one of my words inside of the array. And right here, you can just say initial result plus equals the word for your iteration loop in the for each, like so. And right here, you'll see that this a sly fox jumps is all concatenated together to form this single string. So if I wanted to add that extra space, I can say plus empty single space like so. And you'll see a sly fox jumps for this transformation call on this array of words or array of string values inside of this function call. So that's how that works. And if I wanted to make this call even simpler, I can reduce some of this code in here. So let me go ahead and get rid of these braces right here to make it a little bit simpler and just use brace brace. And I'm going to say initial result plus equals dollar sign zero. All right. And then I'll add in that extra empty space like so on the right of each one of these words. Okay. So this function call right here is pretty much what this reduce call is trying to do. The initial result that we have in here as the empty string is pretty much this guy right here. And then inside of each one of these uh, braces, we have dollar sign plus one or dollar sign zero plus dollar sign one plus the empty space. So here the dollar sign zero is the initial result. And then we are adding onto it dollar sign one plus the space on the right of it. And that's how we get this sentence down here. Brian is the greatest of all time on this facts array. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this fun little exercise on how to introduce the idea of reduce so that you can make your code much easier to maintain in the real world. Now, speaking of real world applications, have you ever wondered how to build out fancy and sophisticated applications such as Instagram using a database service such as Firebase? Well, if you're interested in learning from the perspective of a lead iOS engineer such as myself, make sure to go check out the course using the link down in the description below. Now, I just finished updating all of the source code downloads so that you can compile all of the projects using Xcode 9 and also using Swift 4 syntax. The project itself also includes updated source code for the Firebase 4 SDKs so you don't have to worry about the code becoming obsolete. Finally, if you want to download the source code for the project in today's video, make sure to check out the link down below as well. That's going to be it for me today. Keep on coding guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.